From today's psalmody, from Psalm 146, Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food for the hungry. So far the word of the Lord. Grace and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The COVID-19 pandemic shook the foundation of humankind's confidence with a dramatic display of how a mere micro could bring the entire world to its knees. Overnight, entire nations were ordered to shelter in place. Travel was bound, banned. Businesses were forced to close or to adopt crippling practices for the sake of workers and customers. Handshakes gave way to fist bumps and masks became necessary even when you went into a bank. And churches were not exempt. With worship either banned or curtailed, many watched pre-recorded services now while staying at home, viewing them at their leisure from their recliners wearing pajamas and fuzzy slippers. One's house served as domicile, schoolroom, and office. People either Zoomed or did FaceTime in order to work and to visit with family and friends. The world as we had known it pivoted into what some came to call the new normal. Two years later, the restrictions have lessened and the anxiety has dissipated for many but not everyone or everything has emerged unscathed, untouched, or untarnished. Some businesses didn't survive, others barely. For many people, hope was lost. That word, hope, means different things to different people. Some people think of hope as a wish, along the lines of, I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. But that's not what the word means biblically. The Hebrew word is yahal, whose root literally means to wait. Yahal is possible only through one's relationship with God. It implies that one waits for God to act because God has promised that he will act on our behalf. Luther submits hope is the sum of Christian doctrine writing that I will wait upon the Lord. Here, unbelievers run into trouble. He would have us wait for help, not feel it and see it. But the ungodly do not want to believe. They want to see. This is why they despise the doctrine of faith and seek the arm of flesh. So these two words, expectabo dominum, that is, I wait, will wait for the Lord, contain the summary of the entire body of Christian doctrine, which consists not in feeling, but in hoping. And then he goes on to say, by faith we begin our spiritual life, by hope we continue it, and by revelation we shall obtain the whole. Hope is nothing less than spiritual courage, while faith is spiritual prudence, end quote. The hope of our Christian faith is based upon our relationship with God, not upon our feelings about God. The psalmist calls for believers to offer their praises to God who has been found to be most trustworthy towards his people. Thus he opens with, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to earth. On that very day, his plans perish. The psalmist here makes a clear distinction between trusting God and trusting men. While many a man may have good intentions and maybe even a great plan of action, neither survive his death. God, however, doesn't die. And therefore, neither do his promises nor his plans. God is faithful. God does not change or a whim or forget what he has promised. As our text reminds us, blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who keeps faith forever. 
When adversity raises its ugly head, how often, how easily people's hope wane. It, when it feels that God's somehow turned against us because all of a sudden there's bad times, we're forgetting God's faithfulness, what is often called God's steadfast love in the Old Testament. But in truth, God has never and promises to never leave us nor forsake us. If you will, turn with me back to today's Old Testament reading from 1 Kings chapter 17. The prophet Elijah had prophesied against King Ahab and out of fear for his life had fled into the fair wilderness where God had taken care of him. He had promised that a drought would fall upon the region and it did. Picking up at verse 8 we read, Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there, gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, and only a handful of flour and a jar and a little oil and a jug. And now I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. That drought was so severe that people died from lack of water and food. Think Somalia in the 80s. This widow to whom Elijah is sent was actually gathering up some sticks to build a fire for herself and her son's last meal. They were staring death in the eye. There was no hope. And then God intervened for this widow and her son, and eventually for everyone else as well. There were no government subsidies or water trucks, food distribution centers or vouchers. There were no princes in whom the people could place their trust. The only power in the universe that could bring hope to a hopeless situation was God. And he did. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. While rulers weigh their options and politicians flap their lips, God acts. God acts on our behalf, no matter our situation or circumstance. Listen to how the psalmist continues this morning. The Lord sets the prisoner free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. In the face of unsurmountable circumstances and hopelessness, God acts on our behalf. As the Bible reminds us, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. I also want to direct your attention to this morning's gospel reading from St. Matthew, where Jesus tells the folks, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? I mean, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. 
Are you not of much more value than they? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? The Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus here is both teaching the people on a hillside, but he's also chiding them a little bit. His point is that God is faithful, can be trusted, should be trusted by people of faith. God demonstrates his love and mercy to us through various ways and means, not the least of which is the cross of Jesus. At the cross, the Holy God pours out His Son's blood to cover up our lack of holiness. He gives the Son's life in sacrifice to pay for the sins of humankind. As St. Paul challenges the believers in Rome, so likewise we hear his words now. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? In this time of transition, as we move uncertainly from what was to what will be as a congregation, we are justifiably anxious and concerned for our future mission and ministry. From the issues that we were dealing with prior to the pandemic to the challenges coming out of it, and the subsequent events that have led up to today. It would be so easy for us to simply throw in the towel, to turn out the lights and declare the party is over, sort of like the Panthers' Super Bowl chances, to lose sight of the certainty of the hope that we have in the Lord our God. But to each of these things I challenge you, put not your trust in princes and a son of man in whom there is no salvation, but rather to cling to the promises of our faithful God. For blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom which comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course be preached to the joy and the edifying of Christ's holy people. Then steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Would you rise?